low carb chicken nuggets. Earlier, he began with two cups of whole milk into a small saucepan. Nope, that milks as those are best reserved for frappu latte cocoa drinks. He brings a saucepan to the stove top and sets it of a medium low heat. He wants to bring it to a simmer. In the meantime, he can draws five large cloves of garlic, which he gently smashes with his cleaver, peels and sets aside. Then, using the purple onion, he cuts it incorrectly as he always does. Roughly, he chops the entire onion and begins to cry, like a child who's been told that Santa isn't real. But it's time to move on, because he has a lot of time on his hands. Moving against the stem, he holds a time in one hand and strips the leaves with the other, leaving the stem in its birthday suit, naked. He choppily chop chops two tablespoons just as the milk begins to froth. It appears he let the milk heat too long. However, it'll be fine, he told himself. It'll be fine. Using a plastic bucket of sorts, he adds the chopped onions, garlic, and thyme, and pours in the hot milk. Then it's time for some salt. Well, a lot of salt, because he is in fact making a brine. A quick stir, and he gives it a try to ensure it tastes like seawater. And it does. He adds some fresh pepper, and begins his search for an optional ingredient. Korean red pepper. Just a spoonful. Boop. A stir, and he sets it aside to cool. Onwards to the star ingredient. Chicken. I hate chicken. He cuts a piece of foil of aluminum and sets it on the counter, and meticulously prepares his knife for the coming cutting. He begins by cutting the breast in half, removing any and all grotty gristle. Then he cuts the breast meats into small chunks, larger than a quarter, smaller than a Lego figure, smaller than a battery, but larger than a 9mm Luger. He did not have a banana for scale. Once the chicken has been processed, he adds another two cups of milk to the now room temperature brine. And to equalize it once more, he adds more salt. And quite a bit of it. And of course, more pepper, another quick stir, and a taste test to ensure it is reminiscent of the Dead Sea. Which it is. Then he creates an aluminum chicken slide, much like the slides in the park exposed to the full radiation of the summer sun. You know, the ones you burned your pot on as a child as you slid down them. Careful not to splash because, well, we're not a sea world. He covers it in plastic wrap and seals it with the all important red lid. This goes in the fridge for two to four hours. And he cleans because salmonella, coronavirus, schistosomiasis, SARS, diabetes, and most importantly, ants. And no, that is not an ape. Three hours later, and one wasted egg, he cracks one egg into a bowl and struggles with a second, likely due to his lack of presence in the gym for the past six months. The grimace is real. He removes the chicken from the fridge, discards the plastic crap, and discards the brine. If he used a bag instead of a bucket, simply poke a hole and let it drain. He spreads the chicken out onto a rack and attempt to dry it as much as possible. He pats the meat down with a paper towel and attempt to dry it a bit more and scrambles this very chicken's cousin's egg. He then adds some coconut flour to a bowl, to which he adds allium sativum powder, an ingredient that is common in most kitchens. Next, he must make panko crumbs from pork rice, accomplished through the use of a food processor and pork rice, or simply using a product like pork panko. He pours it into a dish to which he will add enough black pepper to a point that the black flecks remind him of the ant civilization he has destroyed with his bare hands and magnifying glass. He preheats the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, 218 Celsius, and using cooking spray, sprays down an aluminum foiled sheet of baking. Without spraying it down, the chicken will cling to it like a mosquito in heat. Grabbing a chunk of chicken with tongs, he scrapes off as much as possible and gives it a fair and even dusting of coconut flour. Not enough to impart a flavor, but enough for an oof. Afterwards, he goes for a bath in the unborn chicken soup until it is evenly coated. The yellow goo will be the glue for the next step. The chicken meat is rolled around in the ground skin versus clofa domesticus. Subsequently, it is fetched out much like cat poo from a litter box, 
minus the smell of and set onto a baking sheet. Once the chicken has been evenly distributed, the baking sheets are taken into the scorching oven. There, they will sit for a while. Forty minutes later, he removes the nuggets from the oven. In preparation, he pours some ketchup, some honey, and most importantly, a box. And that is how you make low-carb chicken nuggets that are crunchy, moist, flavorful, and most importantly, taste like chicken. If you like this video, share, like, and subscribe, and make sure to comment below. And until next time, eat well.